Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. This bulletin, heavy rain warning for the west now cancelled, but cyclone threat still remains. Dengue outbreak stretches resources, and Fijians in the United States eager to vote. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and this is FBC News. The heavy rain warning issued for the western half of Vitilevu has been cancelled. The Fiji Meteorological Office says this is the result of the depression moving north from Bitilevu, taking with it the heavy rain. However, Akosita Tale reports the public have to be on guard as a second depression, which could form into a cyclone, still remains a threat for the whole of Fiji. Even though the heavy rain warning for the Western Division has been cancelled, the Met Office is calling on other divisions to take necessary precautions as the depression moves away from the West. The depression has moved up north of us and it's taken with it all the heavy cloud and rain and we anticipate the, the system to move uh, further out towards uh, Vanuleu and the uh, Tabeuni and other parts of Fiji where it will linger and for the next uh, few days until the weekend uh, may become a tropical cyclone. With Tropical Depression 14F moving away from Fiji this morning, Wangai Delua says they're keeping a much closer eye on Tropical Depression 15F that has moved northeast from Vitilevu. The associated um, convergence, that's all the cloud and the rain that's now affecting, um, as you can see on, on the satellite pictures as well as on the radar, it's affecting the eastern parts and the eastern divisions, the northern division, as well as Kandavu. Uh, all that is causing um, heavy rain and um, possible flooding, particularly flash flooding of uh, low-lying areas. Wangai the Lua adds they're closely monitoring the movement of the depression. If the depression does develop or show signs that it will develop into a, a significant system or a tropical cyclone and sustain itself from there on, then only we can uh, call it a, a, a tropical cyclone. But at this stage we're looking at uh, Saturday morning to do that. The Met Office says if the second depression forms into a tropical cyclone, it's expected to pass over the entire country and move towards the southeast. Akosita Talei, FBC News. Meanwhile, a flood alert remains in force for low-lying areas downstream of Nayabu Government Station along the King's Highway. This includes small streams adjacent to the downstream of Wainimbuka River. The river levels at 4 p.m. was 0.8 meters above normal. Police have today recovered a laptop stolen from the home of an elections office staff. Spokesperson Atunaisa Sokomori says the suspect, believed to be a known criminal, is likely to be produced in court tomorrow. Sokomori says a team from the Criminal Investigations Department is investigating the case. The laptop was allegedly taken home by a senior IT manager without authorization, and she reported the alleged theft from her home several days after the incident. The outbreak of dengue threatens to turn into an epidemic as more people fall victim to the deadly disease. Fiji's biggest dengue outbreak in history is now affecting not only school students but teachers as well. Shireen Lata reports. Schools around the country are now feeling the pinch of the dengue outbreak. Heads of school are concerned about the absenteeism rate in schools as most students fall sick due to dengue. As a result of dengue, a number of children are feverish, a number of children are not coming to school, a number of children have to be taken back home to the parents, a number of parents have to be now called to school so that they can take appropriate care of their children. Teachers too haven't been spared. This is more common in schools in the central division, which holds the largest number of dengue statistics. Uh, particularly in primary schools where, you know, 
uh, you have exact number of teachers to exact number of classes. Uh, if a teacher is absent or two teachers are absent, then it really becomes difficult to supervise those classes. So teachers end up, you know, in multiple supervision. Singh says they have visited most schools and found that school heads are trying their best to better dengue. There is a distribution of leaflets, there is distribution of information uh, to the children about the dangers of dengue. You know, we are trying to impress upon children that dengue bite is no ordinary mosquito bite, that it has been fatal in certain circumstances and that we need to take this message very, very seriously. The Education Ministry has already suggested to schools on what steps to take to prevent the spread of dengue. Minister Philip Mbole says they'll need the support from the parents, school management and the community to deal with this issue together. Sharin Lata, FBC News. History has been created with an Itaoke baby adopted through the inter-country adoption program under the Hague Convention signed by the Fijian government. Chanel Sivan spoke with the Swedish couple who have adopted a Fijian as their own. <laughs> baby Savannah Colling is today on her way to Sweden with a new mother and father. We have been given, a, we have a daughter now, four and a half months old. And uh, before it was just me and my wife, and now we have this wonderful uh, little girl. And uh, you can't describe the feeling. It's a wonderful uh, a journey. So you really, yesterday when the judge ruled in court and said that we are, we will, we are her parents now, it was, you couldn't believe it. Uh, I watched, looked at my wife and her tears just, and I couldn't keep it back. I also, you know, burst into tears. It was amazing. Collings are the first overseas couple to adopt a Fijian under the Hague Convention. Hope Savannah was abandoned by her mother at the Colonial War Memorial Hospital last October. The couple saw her in hospital and knew they had found the daughter they were looking for. Sangeeta Colling stayed in Fiji with Hope for over three months and last night became her legal mother. She is my daughter. She is my daughter. And now this was just a confirmation yesterday we got from the judge saying that, yes, she is your daughter, so take her home. So it's no news, but I'm just so glad that this is over and that we can, we can take our daughter home and we can continue with our lives. Sangeeta herself was born in Fiji and met Christian Kumar in Australia. They fell in love, got married and moved to Sweden. Having hope with them now completes the family. We're just going to let Savannah grow into what she is and we're going to give her all the support uh, she needs to become what she wants to become. Mm -hmm. We are going to give her all the love and all the protection and everything she needs. Attorney General Ayah Sayyad Kayum says the couple had to comply with strict regulations in order to adopt hope. Parents have come over and adopted an abandoned child um, and uh, you know we, we understand that uh, uh, from what the parents told us, they were very, very pleased with the speed at which it happened and uh, adherence to international standards also. There are various uh, obligations and requirements under the Hague Convention which we have to adhere to and of course uh, the, the country to which the baby is going to has to adhere to. For Christian Kumar, adopting hope was nothing strange since he too was an adopted child. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Coming up, Her Majesty comes to Fiji. Mirchi FM is number one in Singapore. And who is listening to us? Our truth is our Mirchi FM. I love Mirchi FM. It's so hot. Look, I eat la la, I eat hi hi. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mirchi FM is hot! Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot! We are very long. What do you say? We are listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, Bao Chalum Chalum! Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back. This is FBC News. A handover parade to appoint a new military commander on Friday has been postponed. This has been confirmed by Military Chief of Operations, Lieutenant Colonel Armani Suliano. The parade was scheduled to be held at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Nambua, Suva. The inaugural ceremony for the installation of the new commander and the farewell for the outgoing commander, which is to be held on Friday 28, has been postponed due to the bad weather. 
Lieutenant Suliano says the public will be advised of a new date for the event. Military Commander Commodore Vorenge Mbaini Marama had announced he would relinquish the post at the end of February to contest in the general elections later this year. The United States government has committed 950,000 Fiji dollars to help prepare for the general elections. Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Pacific Islands, Ambassador Denise Matu, made the announcement this afternoon after her meeting with Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama. She says the meeting was cordial and productive, providing the opportunity to discuss progress towards elections and how the U.S. can best support these efforts. Ambassador Matu says the financial assistance shows the U.S. government's commitment to engaging with the Pacific and the efforts so far are pleasing. I was pleased to note uh, some of the progress that has been made uh, in moving towards elections. Uh, of course, uh, we still there are still steps to be taken, um, but it looks as if uh, the government as of now is on a positive trajectory and certainly the United States uh, would like to support that process, encourages that process because we believe that the normalization of relations uh, with the United States will be to our mutual benefit and will be to the benefit of the larger uh, Asia Pacific region. A new passenger liner visited our shores today, marking yet again another milestone achievement for our tourism industry. Mikalonga was in awe by the size and splendor of the Queen. The majestic Queen Victoria birthed at the Queen's Wharf in Suva, captained by this lady from the Faroe Islands. When I started, I, I was a cabin steward. I liked the travel, but I don't like the clean. <laughs> So I thought, you know, if I want to travel, I'll get to do it differently. <laughs> captain Thorhaig has been captain of Queen Victoria for three years. The job's been an adventure for her, particularly working in a male-dominated environment. It's the way you go about it. It's the way that you present yourself. And, and I'm not trying to say that, you know, that you need to take it advantage of that everybody else has to do anything for you. You really need to dig in and, and just do it. Break eight. A media tour of the ship on her maiden voyage to Fiji, organized by its local agent, Pacific Agencies Limited, made me wonder if I was really on a boat. It has everything an international traveler would find on dry land. Huge restaurants, bars, boutiques, shops, cinemas and a casino. Very busy in the evening, lots of people winning hopefully. A couple pay close to 60,000 Fijian dollars to travel on this 50,000 ton ship for 89 days and they do get their money's worth. Great. <laughs> Looked after like kings, right? <laughs> absolutely spoiled, yes. Yeah, absolutely spoiled. The ship carries more than 1,600 passengers, has around 800 crew members, has a ballroom and the largest theater and a library on sea. And guess what? I'm now off to a royal lunch. Everything in here has a royal touch, just like this theater. We have Royal Cunard singers and dancers. They put on production shows um, during that voyage. Despite the wet weather, passengers made the most of their time in the capital city. We, we had the so pouring well. rain, but we had such a warm welcome. Yeah. It was lovely. The Queen Victoria departed for Nomad this afternoon, and for Captain Thorhaig, this is her final voyage on the Queen Victoria before she takes over as skipper on the much bigger Queen Elizabeth in about a month. Mikalonga, FBC News. Sports now and Jamie, I hear there's some changes to the qualifying criteria for the secondary school's athletics finals. Yes, there is, Jackie, and it's causing quite the stir within the association. Is it? I'm disappointed they didn't change the criteria for me when I was in school. No, Jackie, catwalking will not become a sport anytime soon. I'm Funny sorry. Funny guy, just give us the sports already. We'll have more on secondary school athletics after the break. And match fixing, hot on the agenda at FIFA conference in Nandi. Stay with us. Today FM is number one here in Singataka. We want today FM in Lambasa. It's hot! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Like, uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. A lot of us love today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vunivar Lampasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.
Welcome back to FBC Sports. As mentioned earlier, the new qualification criteria for track events set for Fiji's biggest schools athletics meet is certainly causing a stir, stir in the athletics fraternity. Some Western schools believe the new criteria is discriminatory, leading the organizers to call for a review of the rules. Elena McDonald reports organizers have some tricky questions to answer before everyone can agree on a common criteria. Grass tracks, among other things, tend to bring unpredictable results in performance. While it may seem fun, the crux of the matter is, how will any athlete be able to achieve a qualifying time set at the Coke Games run on synthetic tracks? The new rule is what many involved are calling an unlevel playing field and simply unrealistic. A few years ago we had a, a young girl who um, competed for the bar zone and won the 800 metres and uh, her time was very slow because the conditions of the track were appalling. However, she came into um, Coke and subsequently set a new record. But under the present criteria, she would not have qualified to even go to Coke. The big question is, how will organisers come up with one solution that will take into account two very different sets of tracks? I've told those people that we may have to review the, uh, the qualifying standard. Eh? We'll leave it at that. Until that review, some have suggested possible solutions. Someone who can look over all the previous times from athletes who've run in zone and then gone on to make the finals at Coke to see what the difference in time is. And then maybe put in a, uh, a factor that adjusts their grass time to that of a track time. And therefore we can you know, compare oranges with apples. The other alternative is you could have 16 of the best compete in each category. That could be eight from the zones who run on tracks, while the other eight will be from the non-track zones. It may mean a couple of extra races, but it will also mean the best of the best will compete, which is what the Coke Games is all about. What happens is anyone's guess. All the athletes are hoping for is that the best decisions are made. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Still with athletics, Pacific Sprint King Banuve Tambakao Thoreau believes he is closer to achieving his dream of running under 10 seconds in the 100 meters event. The 2013 Pacific Mini Games triple gold medalist recorded an impressive 10.02 seconds in the 100 meters during the weekly athletics competition in Suva. The 21-year-old was acknowledged today by sponsors Digicel for being awarded the 2013 Fiji Sportsman of the Year. Well, that, that's always been in the plan. Like I've said, over the past few years, we've uh, been able to drop the times. And, uh, you know, Coach Molotov and I have been working well these uh, past few weeks and the past few years as well. And uh, as you've seen, the times keep dropping. And uh, over the weekend, you know, we ran some really good times. And uh, I think with the more overseas exposure I get, I'll be able to drop those times even quicker. Tambakal Thoro has two overseas competitions lined up for this year. The Australian Championships next month, as well as the Oceania Area Championships in the Cook Islands in June. Vodafone Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan will select his final 14-member squad after the Fiji Bitter Mara Sevens. The 21 players in the extended squad have been told to step it up as Ryan may select players from outside the squad that impressed at the two-day tournament. Ryan made a similar selection at the Coral Coast Sevens last year where he called up Semi Kunatani and Mosese Mawalu from the Yamadia side. The duo went on to make their international debut at the Dubai in George Sevens. The first cut will be from uh, the selection at Mara 7, so uh, we'll select the team then, and as, as it was in Coral Coast, you know, I mean there could be new players we see at, at Marist, same thing we did at Coral Coast, so everyone has a chance. The players in the extended squad will be released to play for their respective clubs at the Mara Sevens next weekend. Match fixing in football, that's the topic of discussion at the Interpol and FIFA conference being held in Nandi. The recent rise in match fixing around the world has seen the sports image tarnished. However, through such workshops, FIFA is trying to educate footballing nations not to get involved in such activities. Hinder Singh has more. Match fixing will not be tolerated at any level of sport and Fijian footballers and officials should also take heed. Alongside of our member associations, 
and relevant stakeholders, FIFA is globally committed to upholding a zero tolerance policy towards eradicating corruption and match fixing from our sports. Many a times in this country, Fiji has had allegations of match fixing, but never proven, which should change in the near future. We would very much hope that we'll be able to come back and deliver some training courses and that these courses will be targeted at both the police in terms of enhancing their capacity to investigate and tackle the organized crime elements behind match fixing, but also to deliver some training to within sports so that they can investigate as well. That would be our plan. The Fijian government in its effort to weed out corruption has reminded football and other sports to play fair. Good sportsmanship encompasses many aspects of human character, the most fundamental being respect. The good sports, uh, sports person respects both his or her uh, teammates and opponents as equals, plays with integrity. A win that does not come fairly holds no satisfaction for him or her. The Fiji Football Association says it is a privilege for them to be involved in such workshops which raises the profile of the sport in the country and also creating awareness. It is, it is good progress for Fiji FA, if you can see under my leadership, there is a lot of positive things that FIFA is doing with Fiji FA, and this is something that we are very happy with. Match fixing is now considered a crime, and it's only fair to say it has no place in football or any sports. And as the old saying goes, sports is all about winning fair and square. Interesting, FBC Sports. The Oceania Football Confederation has decided against hosting any OFC League games in Nandi in April. The OFC has shifted all of Nandi's pool matches to Churchill Park, meaning only Latoka and Basgovin Park will now play host to the competition. Fiji Football Association President Rajesh Patel says the decision was based on the inspection of the ground by the OFC, who are not happy with the standard of the venue. We had pre-warned the Nandi Town Council that the ground is not in good condition. We did it during the Champion vs. Champion, and I told the Nandita and administrator, please look into the ground. And if it's not in good condition, the Champions League will be moved because the ground condition under FIFA and Oceania standard is not up to par. And so that way, we'll have problems hosting it here. And when the Oceania delegates came to watch, uh, inspect the ground, they rejected Nandi Prince Charles Park for it. So now it's going to be played in Lotoka and Bar. So they'll slot the games in between to the grounds. The decision will now see Group B, which has Nandi, Auckland City from New Zealand, Vanuatu's Amical, and AS Dragon from New Caledonia playing its matches in Lautoka. <laughs> Fiji Airways says the steep rise in departure tax is not putting off travelers as the airline embarks on an ambitious five-year plan to increase revenue. Departure tax increased from $96 to $128 on January 1st, one of the highest in the world. Chief Executive Stephen Pickler told New Zealand Herald the airline had at first been worried about the new fees, scared it might influence demand, but there's been zero impact on demand. Pickler says the extra charge would add about 2.5% to average tour prices. That time again, and what's happening with weather, Jen? Rain and thunderstorms. That's what's happening, Jackie. Well, for Savo Savo, Lombasa, and the capital anyway, our report shows Nandi, Lautoka, and Ba experiencing cloudy conditions, as you can see, and light rain today. But still, a very wet day for everyone. So wet that Suva had 57 millimeters of rain by 9 a.m. this morning. And it wasn't just heavy rain that affected the capital city. A slight chill was also in the air for Suva and Lambasa, with temperatures dropping to 28 degrees. Still rather warm in Savo Savo, though, which had 32. Looking at tomorrow's weather, our forecast is for rain and thunderstorms in the central and the northern division, while Nandi, Lautoka and Ba will experience occasional rain, as well as thunderstorms. A flood alert is still in place for low-lying areas, especially downstream at Nayavu Station in Naitasiri. And just so you realize the seriousness of the current situation, here's a photo of flood waters entering Rakiraki today. 
last words for the day. Stay safe, pay attention to regular updates, and be mindful of the flood alerts. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. Recapping the headlines, heavy rain warning for the West now cancelled, but the rest of Fiji told to stay alert. Dengue outbreak stretches resources, and U.S. Fijians ready and eager to vote in the general elections. This week's poll question, we're asking, are Fijians taking the dengue outbreak seriously? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And on that note, please stay tuned to FBC News and all our six radio stations for weather updates. Remember that although the heavy rain warning for the West has been cancelled, the rest of Fiji must stay alert. Till tomorrow, good night. Kita isi ngatakan untuk tali tangan apa orang yang radio visual, nasi sen jalan mutu. Aku nak korong nak tali lagi. Mandau tali tangan dia nak korong radio visual. Kita tunggu isu untuk tali tangan apa orang yang radio visual, nasi sen jalan mutu. Kita tali tangan radio visual, nasi radio visual, entah tali tangan kita lagi eh sikoka. Nasi sen di Manchester Finansia, nasi radio visual, kau 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 kau